Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video lecture, we are going to look at more advanced features of caching uh, in a Spring Boot or an API project. We are going to look at how to configure the cache manager. We are going to create multiple caches. We are going to set the expiry for caches. So we are just going to play around with caches just the way how you would do in a real time production environment. As I already told you that I'll be using ES cache for this example, we need to add the ES cache dependency. So let me add this dependency here. You don't have to give the version, Spring is going to manage the version for you. So don't worry about the version, just add the dependency here. Then let's move on to the our configuration file. Earlier, we had this at the rate of enable caching, right? This time, we have to do some extra configurations in order to achieve the thing that we discussed. So for this, right, to make things easy, I'm going to extend a caching configure support class. So let me import it and let's take a look at this file. So this caching configure support gives you different, uh, you know, uh, functionalities that you can make use of. For example, cache manager, cache server, key generator. It also gives you an error handler. So it's pretty good. So for this example, right, we are going to use this. Now, uh, let us build our uh, beans. Okay. So for first, we are going to build the Build the cache manager. Right, uh, we're going to build the cache manager. Okay, this cache manager is from the Spring framework. So we need to build a similar cache manager from the ES cache. So for that, uh, say create a bean public. Uh, Okay, and we are going to use something called cache configuration, which serves as a configuration for your cache. Okay, so create a new. All right, so this is where you see all the configurations related to your cache. So let's say I want to set the name of the cache. Okay, the name is going to be Google Cache. Or let's say I want to name it as uh, 10 second cash. Okay. Then the other important thing that you need to set is set uh, memory store eviction policy. So this, this is an interesting concept that uh, you're very much uh, welcome to read. Uh, so you could see, you could find more details about this uh, in this uh, Wikipedia uh, documentation. So how cache is actually replaced uh, in your memory. So the thing is like uh, when your cache is full, right, you need to decide on the element to evict. So there are different algorithms available for this. The most frequently used is like first in, first out. The default one is that is the least recently used cache. And then we have the least frequently used. So LFU, LRU, and FIFO are the most commonly used ones. So even if you don't, uh, you know, define this right, the default is going to be LRU. So for 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 knowledge purpose, right, I'm going to define it now. Okay. So other thing that you need to set is you have to set the uh, max entries uh, in in your in your local heap. So for this, uh, you have to set. I'm going to set it as thousand. So what exactly it means is like the maximum number of cache entries uh, you can store in your local heap memory. Okay. So when you set it at the cache manager level, right, a local pool will be available to all the caches under the cache manager. So this is definitely something that you have to set when you create a cache manager. So, and then uh, uh, the important thing is like, you want to set a timer for your cache. 
Uh, so let's set a timer. So time to live. I'm going to give 10 seconds. Okay, this is going to be a 10 second catch. Okay, so that's that's our first cache. So let me give an appropriate name here. So this configuration is going to be for a 10 second cache. And now let's create a similar configuration for let's say 20 second cache. Okay, so this is how you will be creating multiple caches in your application. Sometimes you need a cache to be uh, made available for 30 minutes. Sometimes you want to make it available for 15, 10 minutes, one minute. So that really depends upon your business need. Okay, so if you want to create such, uh, you know, differentiation in caching mechanisms, you have to you configure all these properties uh, so that you can, you know, uh, create multiple caches in your application. Okay. So then what we have to do is like we have to create a configuration of the ES cache. It's going to be config new configuration. Okay. And you're going to set all these caches there. So our 10 second cache is going to be here. And then you have to set the 20 second cache. Okay. And then let's return the cache manager, which is es cache dot. It's going to be a new instance of this configuration. Okay, so that's that's a very high level. So, so these are the two different caches that I'm going to create in my application, which my services are going to make use of. So you can very well go ahead and create multiple caches. Okay. Uh, so uh, make sure that you have this defined in a constants file or you take it up from the properties because for now right for this example I have hard coded everything here so you could go ahead and put all these things in the property files and read it and then set it up in the configuration or you can keep it in your constant file uh, a constant java file and then read it, you know take it from there and put it there so and you can also use it across the application okay so we have set our eh cache manager let's go our configure the spring cache now so now what you have to do is like let's return a new cache manager which is going to be eh cache manager I'll return a new H cache manager and this is going to be this H cache. Okay. Yep. So we have completed our uh, very initial setup of configuring uh, the cache manager along with our uh, expiry. I know uh, there are two caches available for us to make use of. So let's go ahead and you know, try to make use of this and see how the output is going to be available. Okay, let me go back to my API service. Now here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add at the rate of cacheable. Okay, the value is going to be the name of the cache. So the name of the cache is, I'm going to use the 10 second cache here. Ten second caches here, and then I'm going to give a key because key is very important. That's how the cache will be identified. So let me say student in cache plus student ID. Okay, and then uh, we also need to define a condition, right? So let me create a condition uh, for this, right? I'll keep it very simple. Uh, let me say I'm going to say this cache available not equal to null and is cacheable is true. So what is this is cacheable? Okay, it's going to be in another variable in my method. Okay, 
and I'm going to introduce it here as well as here. Going to be a boolean variable all right so what it signifies here is like only if this variable comes as true right then the data will be cached if it comes as false then data will not be cached so this is a very good uh, trigger or an entry point to for your condition right so this is a very good thing so now uh, let's go and test it out and after we test it out Let's try to use cache evict and see how cache evict works in this scenario. Okay, let me start my server. All right, let's try to access this URI. And let's see what's the output that we get. Okay, so I'm going to say cacheable is true. And before that, let me open up the inspect uh, element here. Okay, uh, so let me click on, let me click on enter. All right, uh, my server is up and running. I'm going to access this URI and let us see what would be the output, okay? So the student ID is going to be an ID and I'm going to set is cacheable is equal to, let's first try a false scenario, okay? So I'm going to say is cacheable is false. All right, we received an output and the time taken was four seconds. Let me try to hit the URI again and it is still taking time to load the data, which is again four seconds. Now let me try it to true. All right, it took four seconds and the data must have been cached now. Let me again hit it. And now you could see here, the cache data was returned in 13 milliseconds. Let's give it some time and try to access this URI. You could see here, 10 seconds has passed and the cache has expired. After 10 seconds, it again took four seconds to load. Now, if I again hit it, it would have got from the cache. If you give some time, the cache would expire in 10 seconds. So this is a very good example of how you can configure expiry for your cache. Expiry for cache is a must that you should be doing in your production applications. You can't just uh, leave it as it is. You should have an expiry of either it should be a 10 minute or 15 minutes or 25 or 30 minutes, whatever it is, you should have an expiry for a cache, especially when you work with multiple caches. Okay, so that is, so now we have set up the uh, cache. Now let's go and try to remove it from the cache. All right, so we did set up, now let's use cache event. The value is going to be same uh, because I need the key and the cache name. So I'll take both of these together and I'll put it into this annotation. And the condition is uh, when the cache is equal to null or when the cache is false, okay? So when this condition is met, the cache will be evicted. That is, it will be removed and then the actual method will be accessed to get the data. A very simple example in production you might have multiple scenarios where you want to evict it from the cache where you want to update it into the cache okay for this example i'm going to keep it simple so that the understanding will be prompt and you can you know very well uh, visualize and put it into your own example and try it out okay and there's one more important thing that you have to do when using evict that is there's a special uh, property available which is before invocation that means before the invocation of this particular method. So before the invocation of this method, all these conditions will be executed, tested, and then the cache will be evicted. Okay, let's let's see it in action. So let me restart the server. I think for this example, let's use the 20 second cache. Okay. Because 10 seconds would be too fast. Okay, uh, let me restart the server again. 
all right uh, the server is up and running so let's go to a browser and test it out so first i'm going to say is cacheable is equal to true and we need to get response in 4.55 seconds so now okay. let me hit it again it's going to be 13 milliseconds uh, what i'm going to do is i'm so now let's say false so what's going to happen is like whatever cache that was set in our previous scenario will be removed and it is going to access the actual method and give us the result so this is me again hit this uh, uri and you see that it's taking some time it's taking four seconds so let me do a true here it's going to take four seconds to get the data but immediately after that let's make an another call and that call will return in 10 milliseconds so this is how caching works and uh, we saw an example how uh, you can have multiple caches in your application and make use of it in different scenarios depending upon their time limit okay all right so that's pretty much what i have for you in this example uh, let's reiterate few things before we wrap up okay so we looked at the auto configuration of inbuilt cache of spring and then we introduced es cache manager we looked at the java configurations of es cache manager and then we created two different caches one was a 10 second cache and the other was a 20 second cache uh, we looked at how memory store eviction policy works uh, we looked at uh, least recently used uh, least frequently used and first in first out so these are the three important the most used uh, you know eviction policies and then uh, we also looked into how uh, you know the max entry local heap which is nothing but the maximum cache entries that can be stored in the local heap and then we did set a expiry which is time to live that was 10 seconds for one cache and 20 seconds for another cache and we saw an example of how to use cacheable and cache evict and we also went into a little deep to configure the conditions we looked at before invocation how that would be useful for you and then we also looked at the importance of key key is a very important characteristics especially when you work with caches and then uh, we looked into this example and understood how caching works in an application i hope this re video was up to your expectation uh, please subscribe for more such videos thanks for watching bye